Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Accesi suprememastertv.com barra schedule. Hamare karkam pesh kye jate kai bha shame krupya deke suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. 我们的节目提供多种语言，请看 suprememastertv.com/schedule. Rancangan kami menawarkan banyak bahasa. Sila kunjungi suprememastertv.com/katabanschedule. برامجنا نعم متوفرة بالعديد من اللغات. يرجى زيارة suprememastertv.com/schedule. Наши программы предлагает много языков. Пожалуйста, посмотрите suprememastertv.com/schedule. Mana trulgut alang kiler gartak. Sashla khayib. Supreme Master TV Com Tashotras Schedule. There are only only ones in this world that I am comfortable with to be 24/7 together. They are the only ones that truly love me. I know they love me 200 plus percent or more. And how do they understand everything I say? Everything in English. <laughs> they don't have to talk to me. They don't have to talk to me. We understand each other. Please continue watching to find out more. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic, Olaxis, also known as Vietnamese, Bulgarian, Chinese, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Romanian, Russian, Spanish, Telugu, and Thai. Schön, Sie zu sehen, verehrte Zuschauer. Mein Name ist Marianne und ich komme aus München im traditionsreichen Deutschland. Die freundlichen Menschen Deutschlands respektieren Sie für Ihre rechtschaffene Lebensweise. Deutschland ist Europas stärkste Wirtschaftsnation und hat die höchste Bevölkerungsdichte. Es ist ein Land mit vielen Reichtümern und bietet den Charme großer Metropolen, kleiner Bilderbuchstädte, mittelalterlicher Schlösser und den Reichtum von Kunst und Kultur. Was die klassische Musik angeht, ist das Land unübertroffen. In Deutschland wurden unter anderem Bach, Beethoven, Brahms und Richard Wagner geboren. Das Land kann auch stolz ein besonders hohes Niveau in Bezug auf Ausbildung und technische Entwicklung weltweit vorweisen. Seit 1945 hat sich die Zahl der Jugendlichen, die zur Universität gehen, mehr als verdreifacht und die Handelsschulen und technischen Schulen der Bundesrepublik Deutschland gehören zu den besten der Welt. Zur Unterstützung seiner Bürger gibt es in Deutschland ein großzügiges Sozialfürsorgesystem mit allgemeiner Gesundheitsfürsorge sowie Arbeitslosengeld und anderen Sozialleistungen. Die derzeitige Bundeskanzlerin, Ihre Exzellenz Dr. Angela Merkel, ist die erste Frau, die erste Ostdeutsche und die erste Wissenschaftlerin, die dieses Amt innehat. Es ist uns eine Ehre, Ihnen, liebe Zuschauer, das faszinierende Deutschland kurz vorzustellen. Wir beten, dass Sie für immer in Gottes Umarmung verweilen. Musik 
Seit über drei Jahrzehnten erleuchtet die höchste Meisterin Shinghai unsere Welt mit ihren göttlichen Lehren. Als vollkommen erleuchtete Meisterin übermittelt sie die Guanyin Meditationsmethode denjenigen, die sich danach sehnen, auf der Stelle die Gottesnatur im Innern zu entdecken und im Laufe eines Lebens ewige Befreiung aus dem Kreislauf der Wiedergeburten zu erlangen. Die Guanyin Methode wurde von allen erleuchteten Meistern praktiziert, wie zum Beispiel von Buddha, Konfuzius, Guru Nanak, Jesus Christus, Lao Tse, Krishna, Mahavira, dem Propheten Mohammed, Friede sei mit ihm, und vielen anderen. Sie betont, dass wir, wenn wir uns immer auf Gott besinnen, anderen selbstlos dienen und den Gesetzen des Universums folgen, unser höchstes Potenzial als Menschen erreichen und den Zweck unseres Daseins auf Erden wahrhaft begreifen. Die höchste Meisterin Ching Hai ist ein herausragendes, lebendes Beispiel für Mitgefühl und schickt regelmäßig materielle und finanzielle Unterstützung und auch Liebe an Flüchtlinge, Obdachlose, Opfer von Naturkatastrophen und andere Hilfsbedürftige. Die höchste Meisterin Ching Hai ist dem lieben Gott zutiefst dankbar für all die finanzielle Hilfe, den Trost und die Unterstützung, die sie im Laufe der Jahre den Betroffenen und Bedürftigen und oder für jede gute Sache als sie ein bescheidenes Gefäß, sie eines Mitgefühls und sie einer Liebe, sie einen kostbaren Kindern geben konnte. Die höchste Meisterin Ching Hai erhält Unterstützung und Liebe von verschiedenen Organisationen, Medien, Regierungen und Einzelpersonen und hat von ihnen viele Preise erhalten, etwa den Gusi Friedenspreis 2006, der als der Friedensnobelpreis des Ostens angesehen wird, den World Spiritual Leadership Award 1994, den Mahavir Award 2008, 22. Februar und 25. Oktober 2008, die beide zum Tag der höchsten Meisterin Ching Hai erklärt wurden, eine Ehrenbürgerin der Vereinigten Staaten etc. und wurde über die Jahre hinweg mit zahlreichen anderen Preisen und Auszeichnungen für ihre herausragenden karitativen und humanitären Taten geehrt.
Wir entschuldigen uns dafür, dass wir aus Mangel an Platz und Zeit nicht viele weitere Auszeichnungen und Ehrungen vorweisen können. Als echte Stimme für unsere wunderbaren tierlichen Freunde tritt die höchste Meisterin Ching Hai für die friedliche und liebevolle pflanzliche Ernährung ein und vergegenwärtigt sich, in dem Maße wie die Menschheit die Unverletzlichkeit allen Lebens erkennt, eine ruhige und herrliche, komplett vegane Welt, in der Tiere und Menschen in glückseliger Harmonie leben. Ihre Initiativen zur Verbreitung des veganen Trends sind vielfältig. Dazu gehören das Verteilen des Flugblattes Alternativ Leben, die internationalen veganen Loving Heart Restaurants, vegane Nahrungsmittelunternehmen, Kunstpelzprodukte, Supreme Master Television sowie regelmäßige Gespräche mit einflussreichen Führungspersonen in Regierungen und Medien und die Teilnahme bei im Fernsehen übertragenen Klimawandelkonferenzen und so weiter. Ob wir davon Kenntnis haben oder nicht, hatten ihre Bemühungen einen enormen Einfluss in Bezug auf die weltweite Sensibilisierung für einen tierfreundlichen Lebensstil und darauf, dass uns bewusst wird, wir diese wohlwollende Lebensweise bleibenden Frieden zwischen den Nationen bringen und dabei auch unseren Planeten vor dem Klimawandel und vor Katastrophen retten kann. Über die Jahre hinweg ist die höchste Meisterin Ching Hai weltweit umhergereist, vom Doppelkontinent Amerika bis Afrika, von Europa bis Ozeanien und hat hunderte von Gesprächen mit der Öffentlichkeit und ihren Schülern über eine Vielzahl spiritueller Themen geführt. Heute schätzen wir uns glücklich, Ihnen eine aufschlussreiche Telefonkonferenz zu zeigen. Sie trägt den Titel Die hingebungsvolle Liebe der höchsten Meisterin Ching Hai verwandelt das Leben von Tieren in Not. Teil 2 von 2, inzwischen Meisterin und Schülern, gehalten auf Englisch am 22. Mai 2018. Anyway, uh, where am I? Oh God, you know, mother tell about her children. <laughs> it never ends. Master, you were talking about how a dog worries about you. Okay, okay. So how can you abandon this kind of dog? Some of the brother and sister in Thailand, they saw my condition, they saw dying and so tired, and they want so let let us to take care of them for you. But they also don't have the proper equipment, understand the proper care. I don't think they have enough knowledge. Yes, understand. Even I, at least I took care of Benny when he was young before. But at that time, he already did not need mother milk anymore. This was truly babies. Oh, but they know, even their babies, they know everything. There was one uh, lady who is later I check out, not very favorable. And whenever she came, oh, they're all barking together and they're all surrounding me. They form a circle around me <laughs> when I stand or when I see like protection or something. And then they just don't go to anybody or anywhere else. They just sit around me like a circle. Wow. And just even when they were baby, you know, uh, at that time they were already maybe two months old or something already. So small and already so fiercely loyal and, and protective. Oh, they walk nonstop. So next time I just try to avoid that situation. I, I worry they get tired. So small already, only two months or two months and a half. Yes, yes. Yeah, and already know who is what. Already know I'm their friend. And they're wild dogs, you understand me? They're wild dogs. Yes, yes, yes. The stray dogs, they have never been reared by human or go near any human or been touched by humans. But they know immediately, oh, after I have the babies coming, ah... Uh, She escaped, you know, the mother escaped through the window. She by the window and get out. She was already with the babies. I'm worried the baby without mother, they will miss her. Yes, yes, yes. So if she keep escaping, I say, okay, then just, just go. But I'm worried also if she keep escaping and come back, then she carry disease and all that for our little babies. At that time, they're too young to even have vaccine. Oh. And that's why uh, another dog died afterward. And I, I really scolded her so much. I said, what for are you going now? Freedom is not as precious as your baby. You just stay in here. 
but she somehow always managed to escape. That was the few first days. Later on, she came knocking at my door again. <laughs> I said, okay, you don't, you're not allowed to come in anymore. It's like give baby disease, because you go out, eat garbage, and I don't know where you sleep and hang out with whom. <laughs> and I worry also that she might get pregnant again. And then I'm worried she could not be caught and that she might be poisoned and die, you know, before I even get her. But I could not deal with that at that moment because the house is not all that the way I want it. I seal all the windows until only a very little left for air. But she somehow, she squeezed through it. But after the third day, she escaped. She used her magic power to break the iron chain that we put around her. Wow. And then she ran away. Oh, at that time I gave up. And then I say, okay, fine, fine. And I told the kid, I say, we don't need your mother, okay? She's bad, bad, bad for you. I will take care of you like your mother. I will love you like your mother. Or more so. We don't need that lousy mother that keeps running away from you. No good, no good. <laughs> I keep telling them. I will take care of you all your life. I will give you everything you need. More than your mother ever can. Don't worry, okay? We don't need her. I was so angry and crying, you know? I told the kid. They really understood. One time she came back, carried one kid away. That's how we lost him and died. He died because he came out and called, you know, many nights until I found him. He came back with uh, this temple, and that's very difficult to heal. Okay, so one day she came back, she, she carried one, uh, one run away with her, and then she carried him to two kilometers away. Maybe she worried they get poisoned, like other dogs, because I keep telling her, you have to stay with me. Keep your kid here with me, otherwise you might get poisoned like other dogs. So she carried them away. One she carried by the neck and ran away, so I couldn't find it. And the other one, we combed the whole golf course, get her back. So she carried one away. And then the other one, go with her, but didn't go so far and get trapped somewhere under one of the buildings. And then we got her back. And uh, other babies, they don't follow her. They follow her maybe about five meters and run back to me. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm running after them. I saw her, and then I ran after She broke the store door at that time. That was the second or third day, because I still uh, have the doctor checking uh, them every day until they're really completely well, and then to come back, come in the house. At that time, it's not even my house. I wonder if I should even bring them in the house, because the house is your brother, and it's a luxurious house. Yes, yes, yes. So you know what I mean? Some people don't like dogs messing it up. So I keep them in the storeroom. I clean it all up inside out, and then give them carton boxes and blankets and you know, all that, whatever I can get at the time, and fit in them every day and, and stay there sleeping with them. And now, one time she broke out somehow. Some girl forget to close the door or this, whatever happened. She take all the dogs out, and then they run with her. But then they run all up, all up, all up five meters or so, and they run back to me. <laughs> they all run back to me, except that one she carried by the neck. And the other one that run too far and forget that don't know how to come home. It's just a baby, you know, one month something old. But I found her same day. Except that one, she carried by the neck for two kilometers. I could not. I could not find it until later on. It's too late. Even though we took him immediately to doctor. And we all the care we can. And I care for him day and night. But he still die. Oh. His name is Hero. I always remember. And I cry so much, so much. And I say, in the name of humanity, I really apologize to you. I really am ashamed and I apologize to you. You go to heaven for sure. I have make sure of that. I not cry for, for him. I cry for myself and for the lots of other dogs, all the wild dogs that have been mistreated or has met with suffering like that, for example, or poisoning or, or abuse or killed to eat or for the fur, whatever, my God. We're human. We're so savage. We say dogs are wild dogs and street dogs, and, and but they are not as wild as some of us humans. Yes, yes, yes. Because these are truly wild dogs. And how do they stick to me like that? At the age of one and a half months old, they run back to me. I was so scared. We all, all three of us run out, and I call the neighbors, please come and help catch my dogs for me. But they come running back. They just turn back. I talk to them in English, and I say to the tigers, tell them in Thai and Korean, whatever. <laughs> call them back, and they turn back their head. You know, they were running, running fast to it. The mother, and then suddenly they just stop, and then run back to us, galop, galop, and back to us, and run into the storeroom. <laughs> They're home. 
you know, listen, listen to the mother. I told them, don't care about that mother because she keep going out and deserting you like this. She's bad girl. I will take care of you. Don't worry. And maybe they understood that. Or maybe they trusted me. Yes, master. Maybe they trusted me because where do they go with her? You know, they know already the hard lives. She gave birth to them under the pile of wood. The neighbor, they built a um, cement uh, structure just like a platform. So they have barbecue or thing on top of that. And underneath, they uh, store some wood and they are born inside there. And then they don't give enough food even. So the mother has no milk. I saw the servant give very little food. She probably doesn't understand how. And I saw there's no water there. I said, why no water? When she told me the story, I came and have a look. I didn't want to be involved, I'm telling you. But when I saw she has baby and all that, and the poison, dead already, three dogs. And so I, I came and have a look. And I saw she gave very little food now and then. Only when I came, she gave food. And very little. And then in in a broken uh, garden uh, pot, dirty and sharp, if the baby fall on there, then my heart can tell even. And very little food. And so hard. You know, the baby, they only one month something. How can they eat such a hard food? So, of course, the mother eats that. And I say, why no water here? She say, oh, no, they have milk for mother. Oh, my God. The mother already doesn't have any milk. I only found out after the doctor checked her. Yes, I uh, Because we want to shave her right away. And the doctor say we should shave her. But I say, how about the baby? If you shave her, she has no more milk for the baby. What to do? Because she came and, and gave her them suckle. But the doctor say, no, no more milk. They just do that. Like affection or habit. She wants to give it to them, but she doesn't have any milk. She really have all the bones sticking out. Oh, my God. But we could not shave to her right away for some reason. She was not strong enough yet. Also, she was too skinny and too weak. I am glad I stopped him giving her the second uh, sedation injection because I told him I forbid you to do that anymore. Because last time you did it, she went away and you never catch her anyway. If you do it again, look at her. She's so skinny. How how will she survive the second one? How do you know? Can you guarantee me that she will survive? So he don't do it no more. But I said, we have other ways to catch her. We will catch her. I will do it. And then I engage all the, the boys, <laughs> the girls in the golf course, the employee. They still couldn't catch her. She's too quick, too clever. She lives in the wild. She knows all the tricks in all the corner of the golf course. But later, I say, okay, I have to worry about the baby. I don't care about her. If she comes, she comes. Because I caught her many times by closing the storeroom after her. But later, somehow, she escaped. The moment we open, she, she run under our legs and run out. <laughs> She's so skinny. She can run any time. Or she jump over her shoulder and go out. She's waiting inside. <laughs> She's so fast. <laughs> many times she escaped. So I say, okay, I have to worry about the baby. And then she came knocking at the door. Wow. <laughs> okay, I let her in. And then later... I chained her, but then she, she used her magic to broke the chain, the iron chain. Oh, wow. Even though it's a small chain, but it's still, it's difficult to even fly it apart with a plier. And she broke it. She broke the ring that attached the chain with the pole. But there was the ring that was under her neck and tight. She could not use her teeth to do that. It's not like she broke the ring in the middle of a chain that she could use her teeth. No, no. That was pure magic. Wow. Because that ring, even though small, but it's strong, it's iron. Of course, it's small, so I don't use a big iron on her, but still, it's iron. And it's fixed together, the ring. The ring that you hold a, a, a lock so that you can lock it together on the other side. Yes, master. And it's tight under her neck. She could not use her teeth to reach it, not even her tongue. And then she broke it and ran away. Oh, I said, okay, that's it, huh? That's it, huh? I'm going soon, and you have to be here without your children. I keep telling in the air because she's not there anymore. I was so frustrated. And she came back in the evening. Not really evening yet. Uh, almost evening. And then a knocking want to come in. I said, what? You come in now, really? And I opened the door and she ran inside. <laughs> she's not afraid of us anymore. <laughs> Before she ran away from me. Far away, even if she, she met outside on the garden, she ran away to the golf course. Far away, far away. And she come in now running, rushing, because her children are there. What? God. And then we keep her inside and cleaning her and all that. And from then on, we take precaution that she doesn't go out anymore. I shut all the windows, open aircon instead. And then that's how we keep her. 
And then after a few more days, I carry her around already. I carry her around to, to let her get more used to human male, okay? Yes, my son. And more used to with me, so she knows that I'm safe. I keep telling her that you are safe and your children are safer with me than out there or with anyone else that I know. Because I don't know too many people. I'm not sure if you are safer somewhere else than with me. At least I know you are safe with me. So please stay and don't run away anymore. I will take care of you and your whole family. Okay? Hold your life. You have everything you need. Everything possible that I can think of. And you'll be warm and loved and cared for and be around all the time. That's why I, I have to keep my promise. Understand that? Yes, my not because of promise, but I really love them. I love them so much. And in turn, they love me too. In yes. return, they really love me so much. So you know how precious they are now. Yeah, okay? Yes, Master, I understand. I've gone through a lot of trial and hardship to get them, to bring them here. It's not easy. It's difficult with all this bureaucracy and, and uh, situation and my safety and all that. It's not the normal situation of a normal family who adopt a normal dog. So if I ask one of you or two of you to help the girls also keep an eye on the dog when I'm on retreat, you understand why? Wow. Yes, Master. We've gone through a lot together, me and my dog. Different countries, different air cargo, back and forth, and quarantine and all that. Separation, anxiety, uncertainty and all that for all the dogs. So I really want to give them as much comfort and safety feeling as I can. Yes, yes. So they need familiar faces and good care and good love. They are the only ones in this world that I am comfortable with to be 24-7 together. They are the only ones that truly love me. I know they love me. 200 plus percent or more. And how do they understand everything I say? Everything in English. <laughs> they don't have to talk to me. They don't have to talk to me. We understand each other. Yes. I don't know why I talk so much about dogs. Oh, my God, what did I do? <laughs> I think because I'm going back to retreat again uh, for a short time, but I want you to really understand, okay? Yes, That's why I worry and why I love them. Okay, uh, where was I before? Uh, try, okay, try to focus inside. Yes, because we are getting older now, okay, you guys? Yes, yes Master. You are maybe a little younger than me, but who knows? Who knows who goes, who comes first. Take care of your inside treasure. Uh, whenever you do your work, focus on that and pray for protection, okay? Yes, yes. yes. There are sometimes some of the, the things that you research may give you some distraction, but uh, don't pay attention too much on that. Try to, to focus on your work. Your work is important. Not everyone can do. Maybe some other people have more professionalism and all that, but they are caught up in the world. Some people are better, maybe technically, but they they are not better in dedication and uh, devotion at heart. Yes. Yes. I trust you guys when I'm not around to check yourself and all the programs for me. You study all the, the way I did and then do it accordingly. And it's just a classic classic wise until I come back. Yes, yes, Master. Because I'm in retreat, I don't want to be disturbed. I cannot see people. I cannot even see my dog. Uh, in this uh, period of uh, relent, I can see my dog. I spend as much time as I can with them, and I work all night here to catch up with the things that uh, are left behind, and, and I let them be with me in my office all night, uh, even though they are next room anyway, you know, <laughs> next door. But I let them sleep in here also until I finish with my work. Maybe 5 o'clock or something, or 4 o'clock, and then I let them go into their room so that in case they might fight or something. They're still young and full of energy. So anyway, it's like that. So I spend a lot of, as much time with them as possible. But And I do a lot of work, and I take care of myself. But I also have to tell you truly that I'm also overwhelmed. In some instance, I just sat down and I thought, oh, physically speaking, <laughs> how much can a person do? Yes, yes, yes. Because the dogs, they are just babies, temperamental, and keep taking turns to go in for arm, for love, you know, <laughs> some snacks and love. 
and all that stuff and take turn to sit next to my sofa. Originally, I have only a small office chair, but now I have to have a bigger sofa because they like to hang around and want to come up. So I have to take turn. Yeah? Whoever come, I let them come up for a while, sit next to a uh, working chair, working body, sit, 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 and sleep sometimes, sleep on it. Even the mother, she's so-called mother. My God, she's, she's the worst puppy of all. <laughs> she says she sleep next to me all night on my sofa when I'm working. And then I have to cover all the light. Normally, I keep them uh, in separate room when I'm working so that I can put out the curtain so they're dark. In their room, they sleep. But they don't want to go sleep now in their room. It's not difficult to put them in there just like baby, like children don't want to go to sleep, want to hang around in my office. So I have to let them now and I have to cover all the light. Just have very little shiny into my documents, that's all. But sleep there. Even if I don't cover the light, they just sleep through the nail flap or whatever, you know. All the six light that's shining from the ceiling, they sleep through. I don't care. <laughs> and then kick the blanket and then uh, shake in the body and come to me again. I say, oh, just sleep there. I'm right here. They're a little bit uh, restless now, I think, because we have been separated for the last period when I'm in the retreat again. And so they probably watch me. <laughs> like a hawk, like, don't want me to disappear again or something. And uh, the mother, she sleep next to me, snoring. <laughs> Believe that she wants it every time she see me. Oh, oh, now here come, here come, here come, oh, here come, oh, here come the dance of the reunion. <laughs> I said, of course I love you. <laughs> oh, she dancing and jumping over the high sofa and high bed and everything. Oh, and when the other girl come, they would jump more. And they jump all over, over the table and everything. And the table so high and they jump again. She knows I'm on phone. Otherwise, she will be crying and talking in her language. Oh, there's another train coming. Ah, another express train. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, I don't know what to want to talk to you about. I think it's long enough. I have to go now. Any question at all? No, no, no sir. Okay. I have to take care of the dog now, okay? Yes, yes sir. Because they come in, then I have to let them mix together. But there have to be some tricks in before that, until they settle down. I have to take care until they settle down. Got to go now. Thank you very much for right. listening. <laughs> I go now. Bye-bye, huh? Bye, yes, sir. And thank you for being diligent. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Bye-bye now. For now. Begabte Zuschauer, wir danken Ihnen für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit bei der heutigen Folge von Die hingebungsvolle Liebe der höchsten Meisterin Ching Hai verwandelt das Leben von Tieren in Not. Teil 2 von 2, inzwischen Meisterin und Schülern. Bleiben Sie bitte bei Supreme Master Television und sehen Sie weitere positive Sendungen. Es folgt mehrteilige Reihe mit historischen Vorhersagen über unseren Planeten. Prophezeiungen für das goldene Zeitalter, Teil 41, die Prophezeiung des Shakyamuni Buddha über den Maitreya Buddha, gleich nach bemerkenswerte Nachrichten. Mögen gute Botschaften des Allmächtigen Sie stets begleiten. Gifted Viewers, we appreciate your company for today's episode entitled Supreme Master Ching Hai's devoted love transforms the lives of animals in need. Part 2 of 2 on Between Master and Disciples. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more positive programming. Coming up next is multi-part series on ancient predictions about our planet. Prophecy of the Golden Age Part 41, Lord Shakyamuni Buddha's prophecies about Maitreya Buddha, right after Noteworthy News. May the Almighty guide your steps to all good tidings. Our programs are from many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.